Welcome to video number four of the February Stitch Along with Embroider C. This is our design for this month. You can find it on my website, which is um, in my YouTube um, information. Just subscribe, click on the link, it'll take you there. Uh, it's a downloadable PDF, so you can download it, trace it off your laptop screen or print it out on your home printer and then just trace it through your fabric. If you are a new beginner, please check out my uh, first video. Uh, it's about 25 minutes long uh, for beginners to learn what materials and products to buy that I use, um, how to use them, how to set up your hoop, how to transfer your patterns onto the fabric, everything you'll need to know to set yourself up. Um, bit of a disclaimer, the video is, and the, all my videos, or how I do embroidery. It does not mean this is how everyone does embroidery. We will all find our own way of doing our own embroidery as we go along. So this is video number four. We're going to be doing the alternated back stitch, um, satin stitch, colonial knots in the bigger leaves. In video three, I started doing the alternated back stitch in the smaller leaves. So all my small leaves are alternated backstitch in one colour and I have put colonial knots on top in black. I, there is a colonial knot video um, that I've done that's separate to show you better how to do them. And then there's the backstitch video, which is video two. Um, I've backstitched the stems but, and backstitched around the edge of the leaves. I'll be backstitching around the whole design by the end, by the time it's all finished. But before you want to backstitch everywhere, you want to fill in your leaves. So in this video, we're doing the bigger leaves. I'm, leave, I'm not doing a big, big leaf because that's going to take me about an hour and a half probably. Uh, and I don't want you sitting here for an hour and a half. I've already made a start um, on these two slightly smaller leaves. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know I struggle with technology and focus. Um, it's quite dull in my uh, room today. I've got my lights on, I've got the windows open and it's still not enough light so the focus is struggling. So as you can see I have done the back stitch in two different colours here. This side is only a small area, it's a lighter green, this is a darker more, more duller shade of green and these two are the same colour. I've done satin stitch this side the alternated back stitch this side in the same color, just using different stitches. So it gives a textural difference. You can see a difference in it all. I'm going to uh, continue on with the alternated back stitch in this section. And then using the same color because it's overlapping the, the second leaf, I'm going to just do satin stitch underneath. So not only am I using color, to separate the leaves, I'm also using different textural stitches. And in your design, you can use whatever stitches you want to fill these leaves. Uh, you could do them all satin stitch. You could fill the whole things in back stitch if you're in the alternated back stitch if you're enjoying that. Uh, once, once I filled all of these areas with the colors, that's when I will go above above them with the satin, uh, with the um, colonial knots and backstitch to draw in the lines in black that go over the top. But at the moment, I'm just filling each section in. I have put little dots as to how many sections they're going to be on each leaf. Um, and if two colors are the same, that are overlapping, then I'm just going to alter the stitch. One's going to be either the satin stitch or the alternated back stitch. So I will try and get this one done as quickly as possible. Just trying to see where I'm going. I do have a really nice lamp that I usually use to have better lighting, but 
it's stuck in my art studio at the bottom of my garden because the bottom of my garden is a bog from all the rain that we've been having so this is quite a dark color as well and i'm all over the place on this video <sighs> do apologize it's really difficult trying to stitch when you've got a camera between you and your hoop because i want you to be able to see I'd like my camera to be able to focus. Nice. But with it being such bad lighting today and me moving about, I don't think the focus is going to have a lot of fun. Oh, and my threads come off. Good opportunity to try and show you. <laughs> People struggle with threading needles. It's quite simple. Lick your thread, squish it flat, put the needle over the top and just pull. It takes a knack to learn because the more you fiddle with it, the less likely you are to get it through the eye of the needle. So lick flat, put your needle over where your thread is hiding in between your fingers and literally just shove it on with some force <laughs> and enthusiasm, should I say. I am just rambling now. So in between these this petal, we do have a bit of a we are doing, let's see if it takes better focus. There we go. We're doing this squiggly bit that's in between. So your stitches are going to be going straight. I'll turn this way. So then see your needle straight. So let's get some focus. Is it focused? Nope. There we go. So even though the pattern's wiggly, your lines of stitches on the back stitch or even the satin stitch are going to be going straight. The back stitch uh, will be going that direction and you'll be wanting to do your satin stitches at that angle all the way. Don't change the angle of your stitches. Uh, so yeah, it goes that angle all the way through down the little gap in between the petal. So my back stitch is going straight. Straight down the wobbly gap and then I just do a couple of stitches each side to fill in the gaps. I certainly would not be happy if I was watching a video that was constantly blurred. to get really close to the camera which then means that the camera is literally between me and the work so I can't see what I'm doing <laughs> I have to look at my computer screen to see where it's all going not an easy job you never know one day I might be able to get a better camera get a better setup. I mean, some people, I think, have the hoop on a stand so it stays perfectly still while the needle's going through. There's certainly no way of attaching the camera to the actual project. I also wish I could put some lovely music on, but YouTube will stop and ban your videos or mute your videos if you put music on. That's not um, licensed. Yeah, you've not got the license to play it. And I don't have a license. Oh, right. I've pulled through a bit from the back. Sometimes that happens. Any loose strands that you have at the back of your project could get pulled through, which makes it look a bit messy. Okay. So if I'm too far away from the camera, we have no focus. 
And if I get too close to the camera, how's that? How close is that? There we go. Then I can't see the work. <laughs> and I end up going everywhere. I don't know if you can hear it on the video. I won't know until the playback. I have one of my dogs snoring in the background. <laughs> I can hear her. I don't know if you're going to be able to, the microphone's going to be able to pick her up. And uh, the fragrance in my room at the moment from my sleeping dogs is quite uh, something. Oh, dear me. I will take pictures of close-ups of the work as I, as I go so you can see better. I am actually holding my project upside down at the moment. It's not a camera thing. But I just keep going until I reach the edge of the design. Just filling in the little gaps between the stitch and the edge of the design. So you've got no white spaces. You only have to be little stitches. think there we go that does it so this is the edge of the leaf going around this area so I've done alternated back stitch going in the same direction here and here two different colors and then certain stitches going at an angle so on this side because I want to put dark at the bottom of my leaves and this leaf is underneath. I'm going to start in this corner and then go at an angle. And oh, we've lost focus again. Oh my goodness. Come on, video. Let's put a stitch in. How close do I have to get? Oh, no. Come on, there we go. So I'm going at an angle with the satin stitch. There's a tiny gap. Stuck on my hoop. It's got to be the most annoying thing about hoops is constantly getting stuck on that bit. So there we go. I filled in the little gap and the same as what we did with the satin stitch around the heart in black in video one we're going to go from one side to the other and then we're going to come up next to where we went in because we want to save that thread in that side and come back up making sure not to come through the same hole as you went in okay. now, I don't know if we can see that between the top leaf and the bottom leaf I have this one little gap where you can see the white of the fabric underneath so I'm just gonna pop back into that gap and do one more little back stitch 
just to fill the gap. I hate gaps. Nobody wants to see gaps. There we go. And now that's filled in. If we can focus. There we go. So we haven't got that little white gap. So continuing on with the satin stitch. I do apologise. This video has now reached about 15 minutes. I am going as fast as I can. Embroidery is not a quick thing, so you don't have to rush when you're doing your stitches. And I don't know technology enough to know how to speed up a video for the boring bit. So you've got my lovely uh, commentary. OK, I'm coming up to a curve. So the design, the dotted line curves slightly and my straight lines are going to overlap that. So what I need to do is I need to go in at the end of the curve. Go back in at the middle of the leaf where you want your thread to finish up. But it's, before you pull it all the way through, let's try and get it. You want to hold your thread down and push your needle up in the middle of where the stitch is going. And then pull. And this will keep your thread behind the curve of the line. So you're going to push a little stitch in the middle where you've come up through the middle. I'm just trying to get focus. And you're going back through just to pin the thread in place. And I've got some space left over, so I'm going to have to fill that in. Just with a couple of little stitches. Well, even just that one stitch, actually. So that's that section filled in with a satin stitch. So even though it's the same colour, you've got different stitches to give it that different texture. Uh, with the last gaps, I'm going to be using the secondary colour, but with a back stitch on this side because the the back stitch will clash and give different texture to the satin stitch. And on this side, I've already done the back stitch there. So I will be doing satin stitch this side as well. Uh, it's going to be completely your choice as to which ones you use. Could yeah, no, I'm going to change the colour of the thread. Yeah, um, keep going. Keep using the alternated back stitch and the satin stitch in all your sections of your bigger leaves. Uh, change, changing into several different colours. I have three different colours. Um, four sections in each leaf nearly, but three different colours. That means you're going to be using a textural stitch to give the definition between two same colours. And I'll be back after that in video five to begin stitching the flower. And I bet we're all really looking forward to doing that bit for us new beginners. Don't be um, intimidated or scared or don't doubt yourself. This is totally doable. Go at your own pace. Um, if you're not happy with how it's turning out, uh, you can either re-pull the threads back out restart again or just keep going and and have faith that it's going to look okay at the end so i look forward to seeing your posted pictures on our facebook group um, of your progress of your designs what colors you've used what stitches you're going to use share with the group um, and i will see you in the next video to make a start on the flower